Hi everyone, it's Danielle with North Lawn Flower Farms. Today I want to share with you how to grow and harvest China asters. And China asters make an absolutely wonderful cut flower. They're sometimes called summer asters and we grow these guys from seed. So let me just take you from start to finish on how to grow and cut these guys for the vase. So we want to go ahead and start our China aster seeds six to eight weeks before the last frost. I like to put mine immediately under light so that they have that nice strong light to grow under as the weeks go on. And always keep the soil of the China aster evenly moist. They're gonna take about 10 to 14 days to germinate. So they are a little bit slow to emerge. So just keep them inside and happy under those lights. And then once that last frost has happened and things are starting to warm up, Think about the time when you're about to put out things like your zinnias, your cosmos, your celosa. That's when I'm going to go ahead and tuck in my China aster transplants. Now these guys take about 90 to 120 days to maturity, depending on what variety you're growing. So until they start to bloom, they're just going to really sit here in the garden, looking like nice foliage, but not really looking like much. And then you know, it's mid-August, our dahlias are starting to bloom and we here have these beautiful china asters that we can go ahead and pair with things like dahlias. So how to harvest them? You want to harvest the china aster when it's about three-fourths open because it's not going to open anymore in the vase. It's very similar to a dahlia in that way. How you pick it is really how it's going to look in the vase. And that's not to say that you can't pick it in bud form. Picking it in bud form, it will stay erect, it won't, met, it won't melt down, you know, it won't curve on you, but it just won't open in the vase. So just be aware of that. But maybe you're going for that, look, maybe you want some closed and you want some open, you can do that, but it's just important to know that it won't open up in the vase for you. So I've already cut the central stem of these plants, so now I'm just working with side shoots. So I'm going to take that side shoot all the way down to the central stem, cut it. And basically, uh, once I've cut this china aster clean, it's done for the season. And I'm gonna clean any foliage off that would fall below the water line. We're here in the very early morning harvesting as always. Always harvest in the very early morning or the very late evening with clean tools and clean water and clean buckets. You wanna be able to drink the water out of your bucket and slice a steak with your snips. That's what I always say. Clean tools are of the utmost importance when it comes to vase life. And as far as vase life of a China Aster, I think it's about 10 days. I've trialed them. I've seen some go seven days. I've seen some go two weeks. So they really are amazing. And if you're like me and you sell at a farm stand where maybe it gets 95 degrees outside, if you condition these China Asters overnight in their original water, they can really handle that heat at the stand and be absolutely fine. They won't melt down for you. So it's probably important before we wrap up this video to talk about some pests and diseases that you might encounter when growing China asters. Um, number one is going to be a disease called aster yellows. This is caused by the leaf hopper. And if you've ever seen one, they really blend into the landscape. They're a little bit hard to see, but they have a sucking mouth part, which transfers this bacteria um, from one plant to another. So it, it really can be disheartening to get aster yellows. If you ever have gotten them, you can probably write in the comment section your experience. So the best thing to do to combat the leaf hopper, especially if you're growing in a long row, is to cover them with a floating row cover and then to remove that cover once they've budded up. Now, what I've chosen to do this year because I'm not growing these particular variety in a row is to just only plant a few plants in one space and then leave a long, long section of my garden until I plant some again. That way, if the leaf hopper does happen to visit these guys and I don't notice it, hopefully at least he'll just infect these few plants and not my entire crop. So that's another way you can kind of choose to deal with him. Now, if you do happen to get aster yellows, you want to immediately remove that plant and dispose of it. 
same with some other diseases that might occur, such as uh, stem rot, root rot. If you see anything like that happen to your china aster, remove the plant, put it in the garbage, not the compost pile, and then don't plant china aster in that spot again next year. And even if I don't have any diseases at all with China Aster, it's a crop that I always rotate from year to year just because it does kind of have a lot of disease and pest pressure. So think of it almost like you do in the vegetable garden. You know, you wouldn't plant tomatoes in the same place year after year. Think about the China Aster in the same way. Well guys, I sure hope those tips were helpful and I hope it encourages you to plant some China asters in your garden. Until next time, happy gardening. Bye.